He's 20 years old. Tweez representing New Orleans, Louisiana. Trini Joker representing Washington, D.C. Both of these guys, two of the best young talents we have on the circuit. To be 18 and 20 years old, that young of an age, and already be here in the Ultimate League and get all these cool experiences that these guys have been able to get over the Madden year, that's something special. So first and 10 now, as these guys set their audibles. Do audibles on the fly this year. So some sportsmanship shown why they get settled in, and here we go, Herschel. Audibles on the fly, a big feature in competitive Madden, because essentially what that does is it lets you pick what plays from your playbook you want to take with you to the line of scrimmage that you can check down to. And with how good these guys are reading defenses and tendencies, best believe they're bringing some efficient plays to that line of scrimmage that can get them into a play to beat whatever coverage they see. Rolling out. The other day we actually went out for some pizza. Joel Drini. Problem was there. We're Young EJ. Going. We're always going up. Yeah, that's all we do. That is all we do. Hey, we'll eat six times a day if that's what it takes to, to get to break bread with these players. But he talked about that. He was going to roll Michael Vick out there and see if he had some success. If he didn't, then he was going to be moving to Mariota or Carson Wentz. Yeah, and it was funny when he said he was going to use Michael Vick. Problem, who's, you know, pretty much his Madden mentor and probably <laughs> the best mentor you can have in the game. You know, he's the greatest Madden player of all time. He looked at Drini when he used him, Vic. How <laughs> many games have you played with Vic? What are you doing? He said, I just got to try him out. And uh, that's one of the things you can do in this Ultimate League. It's a long season. You can try out different things to see what's going to help you hit your stride. Well, his offense was very stale against Joke in a 21-15 to loss. Tried to fat fight back late in that one, but Joke able to hold on. Yeah, and both of these guys, it's funny you say that, both of them, when talking with them, aren't feeling very good about their offenses right now. Like you said, Drini, not a great performance against Joke, lost in week one. And Tweez, a very tough matchup against Chaos that he was able to pull out, but it was really his defense that won him that game. Where he threw a couple of bad interceptions. Able to wham it for the first down. So first and 10 at the 42. This is a t in these type of single back formations, Scott, it's either a stretch or a dive. They're, they're looking for an inside outside run type concept. See Drini right now, he's trying to run to the outside. There's the stretch. Walker bottled up at the 42. So we got two games going on at once here in LA. You got Drini and Tweez to the left, Dubby and Safa. To the right, Dubby on his opening drive. And he's already down in the red zone at the eight yard line. Some point Safa here early in the season has got to get some defense going. Gave him a lot of points to True. And Dubby in that gun bunch formation over there in the red zone. He was running a gun tight offset formation. He didn't have much success with, so he went back to what his lab partner Skimbo runs that gun bunch. And he's hoping that'll help him turn the season around a little bit. Overthrows it with Vic, so that brings him a foul. Oh, the down. Ball's out on the left. And a fumble between Trini and Tweez. So it looks like Dubby's going to go up 3 0 on his opening drive. And Trini fumbles it for the first down. How mean is Tweez on defense? User picks, hit stick fumbles. He's been making some plays. That was Zach Martin, the right guard, who picked up the fumble. So now it'll bring up a second and two. Here on the opening drive for Drini. Trying to move to one and one. And the legend, Division A. Walker try to recover on the stumble, and they're going to give him the first down. Youngest champion we've ever had. Albanian descent. He says he has his mom, Josie, watching at home. His dad, Ghani. Brothers, Elvis and Mitat. He said it's actually pronounced Mitat. 
Got some awesome names over there in that Joka family. Let's go! Ball to 20. Herschel cuts it back, gets a block. And a caravan all the way down to the eight. Had a ton of blockers out in front. And this is when Drini's at his best, Coltrane. He's not the best passer we have on the circuit, but his run game, similar to True Boy, is top notch. And when he can control the game at the line of scrimmage, this is when he has his most success. It's the, here you go. You see, it's that stretch dive type offense. You got to pick. Is he running outside? Is he running inside? Jadavion Clowney flips Walker at the nine. And look at that clock, 117. He's already chewed up a ton of time here in the first. And that's what those runners will do. We're only playing five-minute quarters when we're talking competitive John Madden football. So when you're running the ball and keeping that clock moving, these games go by quick. You get in a situation where each player only gets one possession in the first half. And expect this one to go by quick because we know Tweez likes to run the rock as well. Some tempo here on third. Back to Herschel. And it's 12th carry of the game, of the drive, of the quarter, goes for nowhere. Damn. Kajow! The hit, Bandana Drini gonna settle for three. So three to nothing. And both of our games, we saw Dubby get a early three, and now Drini gets three on his drive, and seen a lot of field goals. Oh my goodness, that's So far in the Ultimate League. So let's go ahead and slide over to Eagles and Falcons. Dubby and Safa. Bunch to the left. Safa right on the edge of the red zone. Finds Herschel. And wrapped up at the 15. That's going to bring up a third and six. Trying to take the lead. And Dubby, he's been known to play some good defense, but we haven't seen that from him in these last few events. Said he really needs to find his rhythm again on defense. Back to Delaney Walker this time. And you're right, Safa, it's a first down at the nine. And both of these guys, they come from world-class Madden camps. Dub Dot Dubby with his lab partners and the Nita crew and Bugs, who's a top player, the number one player in the world, Michael Skimbo. Now, when you say lab partner, these are the guys they practice with, right? It's like they practice with. It's like an MMA gym. Even though it's a 1v1 sport, you still need guys that you can go to practice with, work on certain things, spar with, without giving away your game plan to the whole world. So that's what they do. And Mustafa, I mean, he comes from that EMB crew that he labs with, and they have four competitors in this Ultimate League alone. What's some of the guys in EMB? You got Ghosts. And they're all in different divisions. You got Ghost, you got Joke, you got Masafa, and you got Stevie J. All of them representing that EMB crew. So they'll be sharing a lot of information. And the fact that they're in different, you know, divisions, that's sure. a big deal. So that's the end of the first. In a 3 nothing game between Dubby and Musafa. Of course, Musafa on the move. Struggled against True Boy. And it's three to nothing for both Drini and Tweez and Dubby and Musafa. Start of the second quarter here in Los Angeles. Dubby and Musafa Jones with Musafa on the move. Both Drini and Dubby having to settle for field goals there in the first quarter. Yeah, tight ball games all around. And this is what you're going to see when the competition's this stiff and the skill gap's that slight. And these are 16 of the best players in the world. You could expect to see some hell games throughout the season more often than not. Second and goal from the five. Single back ace. I like this formation, Coltrane. This is another one you can run that stretch dive concept out of. He will well. go with the dive. The thing I love most about this single back ace formation is it's an even set. So you got one receiver and one tight end on each side of the formation. So when I flip my play, you can't tell because nobody's really moving. 
Makes it really hard to stop where if you flip this formation right here, you're gonna see Jackson or Harrison move over to the other side. Third and goal, he's gonna go to the air. Back of the end zone. Couldn't find Harrison. You can see those guys talking. Didn't get that high ball animation. And he's gonna have to kick a field goal to tie it up. Really like that neat EMB shirt that Dubby got. So the EMB crew was showing respect to Dubby's needed uh, brand. And you know, they would rock and stuff. And they said, it, you know, they felt good when they were playing in it. So Dubby went and made them some neat EMB shirts. But they all like to go out there and rock. And they kind of feel like it's need EMB versus Top Madden as yeah. far as that East Coast, West Coast feel. And for those that don't know, we talked about the crews. Top Madden's another crew which sells all types of tips and tricks and ebooks online. They're spearheaded by Problem. And they got six members in this Ultimate League. So 10 members of the 16 made up of EMB and Top Madden. Two world class crews right there. Sort of think of it as like a coaching tree where guys start to work their own philosophies. They share ideas. You know, they might take take something out of problems playbook that they, they like or, you know, and, and make it their own. Anyone that's familiar with MMA, it's just so similar. How they'll have the Team Alpha males and, you know, the Black Zillions and all those different groups. Team Militich back in, in the day. Team Jackson MMA. It's all just a group of guys that, again, though it's a one-on-one -on -one sport, you still need those people you can show up with every day, bounce things off of, get, you know, sincere feedback on what you need to do for your game. Type of stuff that goes down in Madden. And it helps. I, when I was a player, that's what took my game to the next level. I got brought into a crew that was called WWA, had world-class players like Young Nephew, Chow, one great user, and it really helped propel my game to the next level as well. So f finding good people that you can practice with is, is a big deal if you want to get into competitive matter. It's a perfect example of iron sharpening iron. Let's go two box here. As Dubby's able to pick up the first down, 3-3. But over here, all of a sudden, Tweez is down in the red zone at the eight-yard line. Let's go scramble. And Randall down to the five. So that's going to bring up a second and two. Tweed struggled on offense in his first game of the year. Here in the Ultimate League. It goes back to Henry as Dubby gets loose on the right. Sorry, Tweez. Dubby's taking it to the house. Dub dot Dubby. Answering right back on Musafa Jones, and Dubby doesn't even blink. We used to see Dubby show a lot of emotion. He'd be animated. Now when Daisy scores a touchdown, and he just focuses and locks in. It's a different type of savagery we're seeing from him. Ain't nobody got time for Tweez and Trini. Dubby put on a show. <laughs> I was a little interested what Tweez was doing on that goal line. I'm not going to lie to you, though. So that makes it 10-3. to three. Over here, Musafa's going to have a chance. To answer the long play by Dubby just got loose. Devin Hester, all that speed, the spin move, you get him the ball in the open field. He's known to get get on his horse and get out of there. Let's get an update with Dave and Rico. Team coming from over here, RG want to keep you posted what was happening on the goal line. Tweez throwing a dot to the right sideline. That is a touchdown. He is up 7-3. We're moving to the first half. So Tweez able to get off to a better start. Punching in for the touchdown. And now for Safa, who stalled out in the red zone on his first possession. Got to put something together here. Tell you what, though, if Tweez over there can start putting it together in ultimate team and start Oof. translating some of his regs games, it's going to be trouble. I told you, he could go 2-8 and eight or he could go 8-2 oh, and two man. in this 10-game season. Of the Ultimate League. Getting a win against the Madden Challenge champion, Drini, would be a big deal for him. It's just another big deal is Safa. It's 0-1 going up against W, who's also 0-1 in a battle. Not to fall to 0-2 in this Ultimate League. That's, you know, a thousand, you get an additional thousand dollars a win. That's, you know, two grand you're missing out on right there. 
It's a lot of barbecue. First and ten. As Walker maybe got a yard. Let's go for another update. More action over here, guys. We saw Tweez get on the board, and then Rico Drini's going to answer on the ground. Not to be outdone, he wanted to show that he has some of the best stick work in America as well. That's right, all the way to the crib. He is up 10-7, coming up on the two-minute warning here in the first half, guys. Come on, Dave and Rico. I mean, Walker flipped the guy. We can't, we can't get any comments on that. Flipped him. I'll, I'll tell you, Scott, though, this stretch outside run and inside run scheme it's just so popular and powerful, and it's really tough to stop. You saw Dreedy on that stretch again. We talked about audibles on the fly. If you're trying to get into this, you need to go and find yourself a formation that you can use audibles on the fly. Come to the line of scrimmage, come out with a stretch in your audibles and an inside run type, dive type run in your audibles. And if the defense has their line spread, you go with the dive. If they're pinching in and the guard in the dive, you go with the stretch. It's a really effective strategy. Back to Herschel, and Walker almost got loose. I'll make sure if I see someone flip, huh? Hey, please. I don't, I don't want to upset. <laughs> I mean, that's just an animation I hadn't seen. You know, you got, you got a truck step that flipped the guy. That's what's cool about Matt, until you'll see animations months in that you, you hadn't seen. There's so much there. Ooh, good run. <laughs> oh, Herschel! Up. Changing the camera and changing the game! Look at him, showing some emotion. Drop the moo and call him Safa. He's in the building with a grizzly run against Dub Doc. Puts himself back in the game. And he's known to show some emotion. This is a guy that lost his voice at the club championship because he was beating his chest and screaming let's go so much throughout that tournament in which he made the final four. Impressive run to really put his name on the map in the Madden community. Key score. With 50 seconds left before the half. Look at this again. Aga, bounce. Break the tackle. Get on your horse. Use the horse. He's in. Look at the emotion. Oh, he's hungry. So tied up at 10. Dubby's got two timeouts. And he's a wizard at this clock management. And he's going to throw it deep. Can't haul it in. But you like him taking a shot. I mean, he lets it rip right here. If you're going to let one rip, no one better than Mike Vick, who's got all that throw power. I feel like he just waited a little too long to let it go. So two box action. Red zone here on the left side. Drini up by three. Has a fourth and four at the fourth team. And if you can make this field goal, that'll make it a six-point game. And it's up, and it is good. So Drini scored on every possession thus far. Big stop over there by Musafa. Gets W into a fourth and 12. I think Dub's going to have to pump this rock. Take a look at it again, RG. Look at that. Six-man blitz. You're not going to be able to stand in the pocket that long when he's sending the goons like that. That's the thing about Vic. I mean, you got a lot of speed, obviously, with your legs. He's got a strong arm. But some of the accuracy will keep you from not throwing some passes that maybe you would throw with someone like a Carson Wentz. And you, 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 that's a good point. And you also sometimes feel propelled to scramble. If you go a couple of plays and you're not using the speed, you go, what am I using this guy <laughs> for? And get you into some trouble. But he's also a guy that when we've seen used correctly and methodically, there's no better video game character in the world than Matt and Mike Vick. Can be demoralizing. Good throw. He'll use his final timeout with the ball at the 41. Needs six or seven yards to maybe take the lead before the half with a field goal. I see both of these guys running this gun bunch offense. This is the most popular offense we've seen in the circuit. Both very familiar with what each other wants to do here. Throw to the outside. Can't drag his feet. Nice job by Dubby clicking on. Yes, good point. Took the words right out of my mouth. You see, Dubby didn't let the AI corner right there. He switched to him and tried to make a play himself. This time he goes right back to it. And Jackson got to get out of bounds. 
Ten not. seconds now and moving. Yep, he's not going to hurry up offense. He's going to go straight to the play call screen, which is actually going to save him some time. He's going to be able to get this kickoff. Veteran move by Safa. And it's up, and it is good. So after a rough start, he's come back here and played well right before the half. He takes a 13-10 lead at the half in this one. Let's slide over to Drini and Tweez. Drini trying to add more. He's got 74 out there running with it. Who's 74? <laughs> George Fant. It's a little something new. George Fant, the most feared left tackle. I was wondering what was going on with that. <laughs> it's, it's, you know he's got to be there for the extra run blocking on sure. the stretch. Has why? And why not? Oh! Bounce. The scum animation. Didn't get the animation he wanted. I call that the scum animation because it's the one animation when you try to possession catch on the sideline. The defender jumps out of bounds and doesn't get the toe tap down. It's one of the most frustrating animations to have trigger for you in Madden. Play action. Fick. To the 35. There's no timeouts. Scrambling. Throws it away. It's a 52-yarder from there. I was impressed with Tweez's ability. That, that deep corner route would have got open, but Tweez took his user defender, Scott, and ran with it and took it away from Drini and forced him to throw that ball away. That was just high-level Madden all around from both players. Drini recognized it and not forcing it. Tweez Needs a few yards here, and he gets it. No time. Dropped it. That was probably for the best. For the best, for sure. That would have ended the half. Oh, I, if you're... oh boy. You're kicking that. Needs it all. And it is up and it <laughs> is good. Everything Goskowski can put into it. And with one second left in the half, Drini takes a 16 to 7 lead. And that's how the half will end. 16 to 7 between Drini and Tweez. Yeah, that's a big, big field goal right there by Drini because it puts him up two possessions, which is exactly where you want to be going into the second half. So 16 to 7 between Drini and Tweez. And then Dubby and Musafa Jones, 13 to 10, both at the half. So, just at the start of the third quarter, take a quick look. And we talked about that flip. This is wild, RG. Kind of coming for the hit, and you get flipped. Agasa, get out of my way. Yeah, you don't really see that often. He was caught up with a blocker. He tried to hurl oh. that blocker, and then he just got flipped. Don't forget the stumble recovery right after. And he's off to the races. Probably the one's biggest highlight runs we've seen in the past couple weeks, and boy, Trini really looks comfortable. Yeah, he sure does, and that's good to see after he had a rough week one against Joke, and for Tweez, this is a chance to really test yourself. I mean, you said you've had some trouble in much salary cap. You pulled out a tough win in week one, but if you can put it together and get a win against a defending Madden Challenge champion, one of the top players in the nation, Tweez, this will really help give you some momentum going into the rest of the season. The young Grizzly right there needs to put it together in the second half. But he's going up against a buzzsaw and Drini. Well, the start of the third quarter, 16-7 between Drini and Tweez. And then Dubby and Musafa Jones. A three-point game as Musafa. Well, actually, both of these guys with... Last second field goals before the half. Drini kicked a long one, and Musafa was able to put his through as well. And really, that's the most intriguing of the two games right now is that Dubby Musafa, as both of these guys try not to go to 0 and 2 in the Legend Conference Division B. 
interested to see what, how Dubby's going to respond here in the second half. We've been known to see Dub dot Dubby when his back's against the wall. He's turned into something special, and you got to think him coming out to start the second half and getting the ball. He, he's going to respond. He knows he can't go 0-2 to start this season. He wants to make a serious run. He's riding off that momentum of those Philadelphia Eagles. Can you imagine Philadelphia go back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions, not an Ultimate League champions, turn it into the city of champions go, over there. Got to have a long way to go. Trust the process. First and 10 at the 27. Dubby. And you, you mentioned it. If you got Michael Vick, you got to move. Yeah, he, he's, he's having some trouble right now. And he hasn't run this offense for quite a while now. He just wasn't feeling good in his gun-tight offense. So he, he went back to the bunch and not looking too comfortable on that one. This is the same exact offense that Mike Skimbo likes to run. Finds Devin Hester. Spin. Speedster takes it to the 35. That's going to make it third and three. And this spin, this is why Dubby likes this Devin Hester. He feels like he can catch it and then, boom, spin right there. And usually that's off to the races. Hester has a nasty, steerable spin move, Scott. You do that by holding the left trigger, the right trigger. Point the left stick in the direction you want to go and press that B button. It's going to be one of those nasty, steerable spin moves. Third and three. Finds Walker and Delaney will pick up the first down for Dubby. Interesting enough, trying to Dubby, who's known to be able to go out to dinner and put down some grub. Yes, yeah, Dubby, hey, you coming to dinner? Told us not. Nah, I'm staying in the room to lab. I, I was shocked. Never see that from Dub Dot, but that just shows how focused he is for this tournament. And he, he felt like he lost some practice time being at the Super Bowl and taking part in all those festivities. So he, he, he's making up for lost time. I don't think he's complaining though. <laughs> no, not at all. Second and 11. Some movement up front. And they'll mark off five yards. That'll make it a second and six. Ball at the 44. Trailing by a field goal is Dubby. Vic. Can't get loose. We'll lose three yards, and here comes a key third and nine. Let's see what Dubby's got right here. Got to watch that post route on the left side. Drag coming across the middle of the streak right up the seam. Throws it low to Ted Ginn. We got some red zone action going on between Trini and Tweez. And there's a quick throw for Tweez. That, that low throw on that stutter ghost plays that Tweez has out of that strong close formation is looking mighty glitchy. Let's take a look at that. You see, he just, he kind of... It's like a back shoulder. Yeah, right when he stutters, that's when he lets it go and it's sort of a... It's pretty much been undefendable. Thus far, did not get the two-point conversion. Oh, and you can hear Safa thought he should have had an interception over on the right side. So 16-3 to three between Drini and Tweez. And we got a three-point game between Safa and Dubby. It's getting crazy. Third and 12. It's big for Dub Dot. Let's go. Two. Not in field goal range either, Cole. Needs to get to the 32 and a half to keep the drive alive. Oh, Somehow, Anderson caught it, and his knee went down quickly at the 22. And I'm talking real quickly. Oh, my goodness. A little awkward right here, but nonetheless, Dub Dot will take it, and yeah, barely touch it. <laughs> you can barely see it. Whew. First and 10 at the 22. When you're dealing with video games and those frames, all it takes is that one frame. That need to hit the ground. 
Got to go eagle eyes. In the red zone now, second and eight. Trailing by three. Under two minutes to go here in the third. Watch the run right here. Vic. It's really good defense, good pocket presence. Throws a high one to Hester. Got to be careful with that ball bouncing around. And one thing I will say, RG, is Musafa is not going to let Michael Vick beat him with his legs. Yeah, he's got a spy out there. He is just containing, doing a really good job of containing Mike Vick. That's a good point, Scott. Low throw. Low throw. Again, picks it off the turf at the four. And these low throws are starting to become the meta here in the Ultimate League. Yeah, last year we saw a lot of high passing. Seen some swerving last year, but this year it seems like these guys like this back shoulder low throw. And hey, you know, they, they get in the lab and they're constantly trying to find new tactics and ways to be effective and things they can catch their opponent off guard with. And the good thing about those low throw passes is that a lot of time they're a my guy or no guy type throw. First and goal. He's in. Henry. Will work his way in there for Dubby, and Dubby takes the lead. Dubby saying something over there to Safa. It's just interesting seeing Dub Dot develop. I mean, he's just so much calmer and laid back as he plays these games nowadays. So the lead is now four between Dubby and Safa. Oh, this is big over here for Drini. Yeah, Drini's now in the red zone at the 10. Let's go. Drini's can hold him to a field goal, keep this one possession. Good hit. Big hit. That was Atwater, who came down and delivered the blow. I like Atwater. He's got a lot of accessories. Oh, it's one of the things <laughs> I love about Ultimate Team. You can see a guy like Steven Atwater go up against a Leonard Fournette. Michael Vick. Vic will get loose. And it's he'll out. fumble. It's out. Tweez hit him. Tweez recovered. Oh, no. And he might take this back to the house. 50, 40, 30, 20. Touchdown, Tweez. Oh, my. Trey Horn. Let's go. From New Orleans, Louisiana, the underdog coming into this tournament continues to make play after play when he needs to. And Drini, who's 0-1 this season, finds himself with his back against the ropes, going up against a defensive specialist. How about that swing and momentum? He was going to be down at least six points, if not ten. And this is what you get with Michael Vick. Boom! And scooped up by Amos. And we talked about his speed. No way that number 74, Fant, he ain't catching him. Jeez, he's feeling it. And that's what you got to do with a Mike Vick. He starts to scramble right back to Drainy with a big touchdown. And there is Jackson. And those looks say it all. Big bump to Jackson, and we got action going back and forth in week two. 23 to 20. How about that for an answer? Could have hung his head after the scoop and score comes back and throws an absolute dot. I couldn't agree with you more, Scott. He's let up the big fumble for recovery for a touchdown in the goal line. Morale could be grim. And here oh. comes Henry. Ooh. Morale's looking grim. Tweez gets all the momentum and you come right back. Take a look and at this replay. A dime with Mike Vick. Look at him. Let it rip. Rat catch with the X button. And Deshaun Jackson. It's in for six. And we talk about throwing people open. He was covered, but the pass lead to the inside. And now here comes Tweeds going back to work. Has a man to beat. Oh! He'll get loose. And Derek Henry Zach! is in there for the score. It's bananas. Oh my goodness, are you not entertained, Scott? They're going back and forth, back and forth. And Tweezy responds, showing a little bit of emotion. The young Grizzly locked in. Got ourselves a battle. 
A 46-yard run, and he recaptures the lead up by four. And that Derrick Henry, he is something special. You can use a truck with him. Sometimes you get these auto-broken tackles like he gets right here. Well, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, and even though that's Mel Renfro, he's a tough guy to bring down. Yeah, and you get him from that back angle, but some get the broken tackle animation, stay on his horse. And Tweez has some of my favorite reactions <laughs> in the business. Four-point game now, Drini. We'll have five minutes as we third quarter comes to a close in a 27 to 23 game. Tweez with the lead, and that's why you watch some John Madden football. What an incredible third quarter between Drini and Tweez, 27 to 23. Start of the fourth quarter here between Tweeny and Tweez. And of course, we have four point games all the way around. Dubby up 17 to 13 over Musafa Jones. Both those guys try not to go to 0 and 2 in their division. You can feel the sense of urgency from these players as this season continues to develop. Week one, it's like, oh, okay, I lose, I'll, you know, I'll get the cobwebs out. Now the season's starting to get rolling and you're really starting to build momentum. And you can see nobody wants to let that momentum go. We got two good ball games going on. It's action packed right now. Let's start with Drini and Tweez. Tweez, uh, Tr all right, I'm done. Uh, Drini with the rock. <laughs> I mean, that's one thing when you commentate. I don't know who Dweez is, you, but you Dweez. You get some crazy names out there. You, you don't know how hard it is to not call Musafa Mufasa. Well, I know, you know, we're all Lion King fans here. It's easy to slip up. Ugh, that's going to be so much creep name next year, Dweez. Oh, and look at Dweez talking to young Dreeny. Kind of gives him a look, says, I'm here, and my defense is on point. With a big sack on Mike Vick. Did a good job at picking up the initial blitz, but the problem was there was two guys coming off the edge. This is big. Drini's going for it on fourth and 15. Ball at his own 30. Let's go. Gotta watch that blitz coming from the left side of the screen. You see that overload, Scott? He's probably got a spy on one of those. Oh. He might have been coming out just to see if he could get ten extra, uh, five extra yards. That won't happen, so they'll make it Fourth and 20, and he's going to punt it away. Oh, my God. And he doesn't, he didn't change out. Oh, it's going to be his a kicker. Punt. It's going to be a really bad punt. And that'll go. A mistake. 15 yards. I mean, if there was a Scott Cole punter, it would go further than 15 yards. I'm just I telling you. Got the leg like that? I, I what, mean. What happened right there though, Scott? Let's, let's explain it for. Yeah. Was that though? No, he did, he has a kicker and a punter. So naturally the accuracy and the power are much harder to kick. He forgot to sub his punter in at that position and he pays for it badly right there. I mean, if the punt's that bad, you might as well have gone for but, it. Uh, but seriously, who, what punter in the league cannot kick the ball? 30 yards. 15? I mean, That's the only credit we're giving these guys? I mean, do you actually punt? I could punt. You could punt? I could punt. Coffin corner type guy? Or, or are you just booting it? Oh, if it's just me out, out in the clear field, I'm just booting it. How far? But if it's me. How far are we talking here? It's going at least 30, 35. I need the production team to set up the. I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting much hang time on it. Go outside. I, I need to see this. I mean, I'm not getting world class hang time. But I can send it down there. Yeah, don't worry. We might end up doing a special piece. Of <laughs> you out here just booting the ball. We'll see. First and five after the movement. It's a four-point game. If Tweez can go down here and punch it in, it's going to be a tough situation for Draney. Tweez's offense, it's very slow. He runs the ball, he picks up first downs. He's going to be able to kill some clock here if he can get a couple of first downs, leave Greeny with minimal amount of time, and if he scores a touchdown, 
It's two possessions. For Drini, it is pivotal that at worst case scenario for him, he holds Tweez to a field goal here and keeps this a one possession ball game. This is big. This is a big possession. Second and two, under three to go. And Henry can't cut it back. Let's take a quick game break. Guys, W continuing to build on that lead. Big field goal here, Rico. And this is where taking three helps you because it gives you that seven point lead. 20 to 13, W, almost two minute warning here in the fourth quarter. All right, so a touchdown game. Down at the two minute warning on that side. We got a four point game here. Cunningham! And an incredible user play by Drini. Good call, Scott. That's definitely all user right there by Drini. Goes up. Starts off taking away a few routes. See him playing up top with that linebacker and then immediately crashes wow. down and fills that gap to prevent the scramble. That is just really good user defense right there by Young Dreen. He saved himself, giving up the first down on the scramble, and Tweez is going to have to take the field goal. Oh, wait, he's well, he's, he's thinking about not. You can see the play art there on the right side. <laughs> he might be just trying to draw him off sides. Just get him a fourth and one instead of a fourth and six. You cannot give up the low throw. This is going to be a stutter step. This is crazy. This is going to be a stutter step. He, he has not missed this pass yet. I think he's just, I think he's just trying to... Oh, he's going! It's going to be a low throw. Can't get it away! What are we doing? I mean, Tweez is cold-blooded. He's going for the dagger right here. He's trying to put Drini away, but Drini's defense stands up for itself. Back-to-back -back great user plays by Drini. Covering up that stop-and-go route on the left side. And now he's got a chance. Second and seven. 148 to go in this one. Ball to 35. This is the bread drive. Red drive, the money drive, the guap drive, the glory drive. Has to have a touchdown. Hands it off to Herschel Walker. What? Let's go for another quick update. Guys, we have been seeing huge defensive plays all week. Dubby comes up with another one on fourth down. Big hit up the middle of the field, gets the ball back. He is up seven, under two minutes to go. Kind of milk that clock. He needed that. So third and three over here. They'll be making some nice plays in our other game. But Drini needs it. And there is Ty. This is getting down to the nitty gritty. Young Drini in field goal range, but field goal no good. He's down four points. Only two timeouts left. This is it, like you said, Scott. This is the money drive. I mean, this is a Madden 18 challenge belt winner that's trying not to go 0-2. <laughs> Shows how stiff the competition here is in the Ultimate League. One fifteen to go. First and ten at the 28. Back to Herschel. And the former Heisman winner goes nowhere. Regardless of what happens in this game, you got to pay homage to Tweez and his ability to adapt to a new, new mode going up against top-level competition. And he's given... Anyone he plays, all they can handle so far this season. You gotta respect it. He's got the Jordan 12s on, so he's got my respect from the get go. Let's go. Herschel Walker for the lead in Trini. Able to run it in. And this will make it a three point game. Young Trini representing top Madden.com. Keeps his composure. Big run. Now puts Tweezers back against the ropes. See how the young Grizzly can respond with only 54 seconds. Does have all three timeouts. And here goes Ginn. Teddy Ginn Jr. Can't spin away. You see Tweez very good with that spin on special teams. Look at this though. blocking. And, and, and Trini is known for that. He is one of the best at just following his blocks, getting to the outside, finding the right lane. One of the best run games along with True Boy we have on the circuit. Yeah, so many players out there. A little, little tip. Just when you get the ball, don't be holding down turbo. You got to be patient. Wait for those blocks to set and then kick it into high gear. It's a real tip right there from the cold train. First and 10. Cunningham rolling to the left. 
Playmakers up, makes the throw, oh. and Tyreek Hill, he's in field goal range. Look at Tweeds flirting with his second overtime game within two weeks of the season. This is a big play. The playmaker, and then to have the gall to throw it. And Cunningham with a laser beam. And the playmaker, that's if you flick the right stick in any direction you want, that the closest receiver to you will redirect their route in that direction. So Tweeds flicks the right stick up. The crossing route directs his field upfield. Tweeds lets it rip. Big gain. Touchdown will win it. He's in field goal range to tie it. Cunningham. Buying time. Has one. Oh, what a touchdown, touchdown Tweez. Oh, let him have it, Tweez. Come on. He will not go away, Scott. We just talked about his ability to adapt. 54 seconds back against the wall, going up against the belt winner and Young Trini, one of the best young talents we have on the circuit. Two timeouts for Drini, trailing by four. And he kicks it right down the middle. Uh-oh, can Drini get icky right here? Tyreek Hill. Has a room. But able to be corralled at the 36. And this was huge because it puts Tweez up four points, so the field goal no good for Drini. And that's the mismatch. It was Henry on Doomerville. And Elvis Dumerville just could not get back. He's a bronze going up against an elite. Wait, he's got room. And Vic gets he's to the outside. Oh. And there's that secure tackling. Saw the blue pop up. Amos wasn't going to let him get away. Now the thing that kills him right here, though, Scott, is this tiptoe animation. Look at the stick work. Sets up the blocks. Outruns him. And then right here, the tippy toes killed him. If he could have just stayed straight on his horse. He might have been off to the cribbo. But now you got a shot. And the you know, ball at the 36. You can definitely put this one in the end zone. Yeah, you know Vic has the arm to launch this thing. Oh, He's going to oh. run it with Vic again. He's got a timeout. And he barely gets that timeout. That was risky. Called one second, one tick, one shot to avoid going 0-2. Gibbs would say mom spaghetti time. Tweez is about to go 2-0. Oh. Final play. And Let's it's picked go. off. And Tweez is undefeated here in the Ultimate League. I told you, he could go 2-8 and eight or 8-2. Eight and two. What a story from Trey Horn, the Louisiana native. Coming in, all the competitors thought he might be the sweet game. Tell you what, that man's not the sweet game this in this league. Let's take a look at these final scores. Trini falling 34 to 30. And Dubby 30 to 13. He was down by three and runs off 20 points in the second half to beat Musafa Jones. So some incredible games thus far. We are just getting going here, RG. And I tell you what, Tweez has come to battle. He's come to fight. He's come to play. And more importantly, he's come to win. Yeah, he's 2-0 and oh so far this season. And I think more shocking is one of the top players in the country, former belt winner, Young Trini, starting off his season at 0-2. And, and same with Masafa Jones. I mean, these guys... They're going to need to get it going here. They could find themselves in some trouble. Yeah, two belt winners in Drini and Dubby. Dubby able to get the victory, avoiding going to 0-2. But now Drini is 0-2 in his division. Yeah, and competitive Madden, it's a game of momentum. So when you start going on these type of losing streaks, it can mentally break you down. It's a hard run to get out of. I mean, granted, these guys are world class, and they know what they need to do. But those losses starting to pile up can really, really affect you. So I'm really interested to see how both of those guys do in their next match. Because falling behind 0-3, I mean, especially guys of that talent, it's just unheard of. I mean, I guess anything could happen in Ultimate League. Absolutely, RG. Let's go down to the third member of our broadcast team, Adrian Lawrence. 
Thanks, guys. Tweez, that was an incredible game. You took down Drini, a belt winner, and you've never played in this salary cap mode. How are you doing this? I mean, I'm just adjusting. Like, last game, I played horrible. I don't, I don't have too many bad games. So, I knew next game I was going to play real good. And, and that you did, definitely getting the win. And there was a lot of back and forth there. How did you end up pulling this off? I mean, I, w I really wanted to end the game in the fourth quarter with two minutes left, and I got stopped. And he scored on a running play, then I know it was go time from now. I had to go get points. And I know last night you said you were going to practice in this mode, but you ended up falling asleep. Do you think you're going to practice tonight, or is everything going pretty good? Oh, yeah, I'm up all night. <laughs> I got to stay up. <laughs> Very nice. Well, wish you all the best for the rest of the Thank season. You. Dave and Rico, to you.